Good day everyone, especially to our subject instructor, Ma'am Etil Ancas. Ma'am, by the way, I'm Federino Stirilatado Jr., the first reporter of the group. And my topic is all about nursery management of horticultural crops. Our object objectives, first is to understand the importance of nursery, nursery management of horticultural crops. The second is to apply the nursery management of horticultural, horticultural crops. What is nursery management? Nursery management may be defined as the sum of the activities performed for the successful production, care, and marketing of different planting materials such as seeds, seedlings, cuttings, and etc. What is horticultural crops? Horticultural crops are used to diversify human diets and to enhance our living environment. Vegetables, fruits, flowers, ornamentals, and lawn grasses are examples of horticultural crops and are typically produced on a smaller scale with more intensive management than agronomic crops. The following are the, are the physical aspects of nursery management. The first is site selection. Slightly a ruling area to prevent water stagnation and achieve good drainage is the best site to establish nursery management. The soil should be sandy loom with a pH ranging from 6.5 to 7. Second is mother plant or the stock for the nursery. The planting materials for the production of horticultural crops must be good quality. Proper selection of mother plants or stock for nursery is a very important. It is the primary source of all the nursery products which are taken out from the nursery by the customers who intend to engage wholesale or retail of horticultural planting materials or those who are planning to establish horticultural crop production project. The last one is seed bead, seed box germ or the germination tray preparation. In a large scale planting, the vegetable seedlings as well as the fruit trees seed seedlings are raised in outdoor seed beads instead of seed boxes or germinating tray. In this system, the seedlings may be raised economically. The seed bead should be prepared by spading and raking to pulverize the soil, a 1 by 10 square meter seed bed is good enough during dry season with 15 cm high. During rainy season, seed bed should be 20 to 25 cm high to provide ample space for draining and to protect plants from damage due to water lagging. That's all for my topic and to continue the topic, my call in Miss Tan for the continuation of this topic. So, good day everyone. So, my name is Fatima Tan. So, let's continue the discussion. So, to ensure the safety of our seedlings from the soil diseases, we must be followed the soil sterilization method. So, the first method is the burning organic materials on the soil. So, this method is a common method where the soil sterilization is heating up the soil or the burning waste on the top of the soil. So, in this method, like organic siya because the burning waste kay gina sunog na to siya on the top of the soil to control the soil diseases. So, next is the solarization. This method, we will use sun to heat up the soil and this method will control the soil diseases. So, the third method is the biofumigation. This method is a chemical compounds that release during discomposition of certain carbs. So, the last method is the chemical treatment where we will use the formaldehyde, formaldehyde and water to treat the soil and to avoid the soil burn diseases. So, magamit yung tadari o chemical to treat the soil diseases. And those are the methods to prevent the or to prevent our soil or our seedlings from the soil diseases. And having a proper way of sowing seeds, we will ensure higher percentage of germination. So, we if we have a proper way of sowing seeds, it will ensure the higher percentage of germination. So the following are the procedures of sowing seeds. So the first 
is the moistening the soil media. Second is the seed the soul second is sow the seeds in rows and or broadcast evenly and timely third is cover the seeds with fine layer of fine soil to enough to cover the fine seeds and fourth press down firmly the surface of the seed box box and to ensure the compact of the seeds so the last is use sprinkles or sprinkler to water the seed bags or seed beds that's it okay so good day everyone i am dara nino kirlampago and for today's discussion let's talk about on how to care the growing seedlings the care of growing seedlings First, we have pricking. In case where seedlings in seed boxes or seed beds are thickly populated, practice pricking out. The rule in pricking is never handle the plants by their stems, which damage easily but always by their seed leaves. Others use a sharpened wood or metal device called dibble to separate and ease out the seedlings. Taking care not to damage the delicate roots. This is done by transferring young seedlings, when the first two true leaves have already developed, to another seed box or seed bed or individual plastic bugs. Number two, we have hardening off. It will be necessary to harden off your seedlings before transplanting them into the garden beds. This is accomplished by placing the seedlings outside in a sheltered location. At this point, the seedlings are very tender and could easily sheltered location. Increase the time in full sunlight gradually, adding time each day. We must protect the seedlings from wind and animals to prevent breakage of the tender vegetation. Start out by placing the seedlings in full morning sunlight for one hour. Within a week, your seedlings should be able to withstand with full sunlight the whole day without wilting or burning the tender leaves. Third, we have tining and rugging. Some plants with tiny seeds are delicate. They can be sown along a shallow drill and later, some seedlings can be pulled out leaving the healthy seedlings about 5 cm apart. This is called tining. Tining is the process of reducing the number of seed bed or seed box, while the rogging, the process of pulling out disease infected or damaged seedlings. Four, we have nutrient management. Fertilizer requirement of nursery seedlings must be undertaken to achieve normal growth. Adding commercial fertilizers such as urea 4600 ammonium sulfate 2100 and complete fertilizer 14 will further improve the vegetative growth of the seedlings aside from organic materials such as compost and manure incorporated are mixed in the soil for the seed bed seed box and polyethylene bag water management the availability of water in the soil will facilitate absorption of soil nutrients. Avoid watering the seedlings late in the afternoon as soon as the seeds germinate to prevent them from dumping off. It means water supply through soils is vital for both plants and soil organisms. They need water to survive. Soil water contains nutrients that move into the plant roots with plants take in water to seeds or plants need a water for them to survive. Control of insect pests on diseases. The most common way of controlling the occurrence of insect pests and diseases is through chemical control using insecticides for insect and fungicide for common diseases of thirsty plants. So if we have plants or we have a business which are plants and vegetables, we as an owner, we should protect our plants through chemical control using insecticides for insects and fungicide. 
for common diseases of nursery plants to have a healthy plants, we should maintain our plants and check always. Road network. Accessibility of two roads will facilitate transportation activity in processing necessary materials and supplies for the nursery. It will also house in transportation of nursery products on the part of the buyers and the owner of the nursery. So if we have a proper road network, we can easily transport the materials that we need in nursery. It will also speed up the transportation of nursery products in the part of the buyer and the nursery owner. Office and storeroom. A nursery must have a separate office for keeping all records, information books, and ledgers. It will always serve as a meeting venue for the nursery in charge when giving vital instruction to nursery workers. A nursery should have an office where his records and information book can be placed so that when he searches or finds him, he can more easily give or see the records he needs. This, this office is not only for records and books, it is also where they meet if there is ever, ever something to be done or negotiated for their business, so there must be an official office. Nursery is consequently the basic needs of horticulture. Plants propagation techniques and practices are the call of horticulture in nurseries. The planning materials for horticultural plantations are raised from seeds and vegetative parts. Role of mother plants is very primary and important. The fate of nursery depends on the quality and truthfulness of a mother plant. A good nursery entrepreneur does not depend on other for procurement of a mother plants. Mother plants are required for both stock and shown. Mother plants should be selected on the basis of a genetic traits and other factors like availability and adaptions in the growing environment. Vegetables nurseries all vegetables except few like potatoes, sweet potato, bulbas, and some other are raised by seedlings. Very few vegetables are perishals like little ground, drumstick. Seedlings are to produce on a large scale in short period. Fruit crops are mainly propagated vegetatively and in special techniques for propagation as well as maintenance. Mango guava, sapota, and orange, etc. are propagated with vegetative means. Fruit nursery are essential for productions of crop as well as the mother plants of root stocks. Nursery that emphasize the holistic approach. Children spend a lot of time outdoors participating in forest school and indoors learning through Montessori. Forest nursery are crucial because they are shown to have a superior survival rates than seeds sown directly in the ground or by natural regenerations. Whether they are native flower plants nurseries, the seedlings of flower plants like bubera, carnations, and etc. A greenhouse, often known as a glass house, is a structure created to shield delicate of out of season plants from extreme cold or heat growing crops in protected structures that are converted into transparent or particularly transparent materials is known as greenhouse farming the main goals of greenhouse are to create ideal conditions for growth and to shield crops from paste and hard weather tropical flowers and tomatoes are among the plants that are grown in greenhouses even in the winter a greenhouse keeps a comfortable temperatures inside sunlight enters the greenhouse during the day and heats the air and the plants with them